Welcome back to the Crit Shack. Uh, we are here in episode four, and tonight we have a kind of a special occasion here. Uh, Isaiah is actually here live in person with us, not on Zoom, so we're really pumped, we're really excited uh, just to get to hang out and be with him in person tonight. It's going to be fantastic. Um, and uh, I did gentlemen. get his autograph. Nice, yeah. Well, uh, if you guys are really into it, we can ship autographs out to whoever needs them. Amazon Prime, we'll have them set up. That's right. Uh, it's Cyber Monday today, or tomorrow, boys, let's make it happen. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, join our little party here in episode four. All right, so the last time that we were together, uh, so there, you guys made your way to Dagger's Edge. Among other shenanigans that happened, the gang was adjusting to. Uh, a werewolf and a vampire in their midst. Uh, the Silent Blades finally made contact with you through a mysterious figure known only as the second creepy grandma lady. Or not creepy, just badass grandma lady. I think that's how you described her. Yeah. All right. The Silent Blades' plan is to storm the Lich's tower uh, and like with their main force, and you guys are supposed to be able to sneak in and steal mm -hmm. its phylactery, which the phylactery is what houses its soul is how the magic users that are liches uh, store their, themselves so they're pretty much immortal. Sort of like a horcrux. Uh, shout out to Harry Potter there. Alright, uh, but before we begin, and I'll tell you where we're at, uh, if you guys want to just do, like say who you're playing and describe your character like in pretty good detail, just so that we all have a visual of it, go ahead and do that. I play, <clears throat> yeah, I play uh, Winston, son of Bilbo, uh, aberrant mind sorcerer, uh, recently turned vampire, um, specializes in magic combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now biting people. Now biting people. Is that it? Okay. I uh, <clears throat> play Drago Strongborn, who is a uh, blood hunter human, who also just, well, he just turned werewolf, and he's kind of like a fighter slash um, warlock kind of guy. Sweet. Uh, my name is Caleb, and I am playing Aeon. He is a uh, variant. I, and I still would like me to have figured out how to pronounce this correctly. I say it Asmar, but Asmar. I call it this. So yeah. that's what I was going to say, Asmar, too. Uh, variant Asmar. Um, so he is unknowing to him as of yet, um, is part celeste, part human. So, or celestial, excuse me, part human. So uh, he's also a magic user um, and uh, has a little pet named Gerald, who is, we're not really sure what it is yet. It's uh, kind of think like a. Little white baby dragon with no wings. That kind of looks like a giant gecko. But <laughs> that is uh, Gerald, and we call him Gur for short. Oh, and it, something that you would have noticed from like the last time we were playing to like the end till now is there are little things that on uh, each of his shoulders actually that are kind of pointing little out. Little nubbins starting yeah. to grow. So that's happening. Awesome, awesome. All right. So let's get into it. Let's get it off. Oh, that's real loud. That's a fire. All right. So what happened is you guys plan to set out in the morning. So you go to bed uh, in Margaret's house, and you awake with the start. Somebody is trying to wake you up, and it was the second. She's whispering for you to follow her into the secret uh little compartment underneath the kitchen table and you guys go in there it's pretty much a three by three box that you're sitting in and you hear this whole scene take place uh, you guys remember uh, the Crimson Order burst in uh, Lord Ember makes an appearance that is really startling to you all and Margaret very bravely actually tells her that you're or tells Lord Ember that you guys are going to the north through the Devil's Cross, which is the path that you guys fought that uh, basilisk on. All right, and then she dies. The baby uh, is taken by the captain, 
and is told, the captain is told to take the children back to Knight's Landing and he's going to take the main force through the pass. And so he takes the main force through the pass, uh, but right before he leaves, uh, the question's asked, what should we do with the town? Like, they don't, they've been a thorn in our side for too long. And Lord Ember says, burn it all down. And that's how it ends. And so you're trapped in this little area. The dining room table has been pushed over on top of the uh, compartment that hides you. And you start to feel heat on your face. Your skin is burning and your breath starts to become more shallow from the heat. And somehow this unnatural flame, because it's normally fires take a little bit longer than this to get started, uh, is uh, already roaring. And you guys are trapped in this house. What are you gonna do? Remind me, is it is the door above us in like within like reaching up and touching? Yeah. So there's a trap door. Yeah, but like right above if we stand up, we could easily just. Yeah, open. yeah. <sighs> Why don't you swing that sword of yours up there and see if you can hack that door open? Sure thing. I could do that. <clears throat> Good idea, Smalls. Right, can I go? Does it make a check for that? Or? So if you wanted to, you can do like an attack roll on the door, or you can try to do an athletics uh, check. Uh, let me do an athletics. To try to push the table and the trap door open. All right, and just so that we're all aware, this is indeed uh, the f skill challenge to escape the town because now it's burning all around you. There's going to be different things that happen as we are going through this. I got a 22. All right, and that's going to be a success. All right, so the, you uh, shove the door open, uh, the trap door above you. The table comes rolling off, and you're, there's smoke just being let in through this now open trap door, but the, the door is open ahead of you all. <laughs> This is terrible. Oh, I can't see anything. And There's that, a lot of smoke up here, fellas. Yeah, I'm getting out of here, y'all. Yeah. Seems like a wise course of action. Let's go. Let's go. We're talking in this burning house too much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm busting it out the door. Anyone is not okay. thinking, just yeah. fresh air. I'm gone. Cause I got to get Gert yeah. out of the backpack. He's suffocating in there. All right, so you guys... Uh, you burst through the door, the door's not locked or anything, and it's still uh, relatively intact. So as you leave the house, the house is on fire all around it, and the town is already on fire. Uh, throughout the town, you can see flames burning. Uh, there's uh, alarms ringing in different areas of the town, and uh, you're on this street. I will tell you that there's two directions that you can kind of see as you go out of the house, we'll say this is the house. There's two little sections here. Uh, one uh, seems a little bit less cray-cray, uh, but there's also uh, no, not as much screaming down that way. And then there's a lot more screaming down the side that is just like totally ablaze. Guys, we gotta do our best to help as many as we can. I agree. Let's do it. We're going towards the screams. Um, can I roll a nature check to see if, um, how bad the, well, can I roll investigation to see if there's a way that I can, we can maneuver down there, uh, through the flames? You can the next time because right now it's there. We gotta go in order. Remember you, so in a skill you challenge, just you just went. Oh, you knocked oh, out okay. the house. I thought you said this time around, um, I misunderstood, I'm sorry. No, that's cool. So I'm gonna roll an Arcana check, to see if I can find the source of the flames. Okay. My four. It's gonna be like that, huh? <laughs> it's gonna be one of those nights. Hey, as I is here, it's good luck. Let's mm -hmm. make it happen. That's right. All right. So, uh, Eowyn, you're looking around and you you just get a sense that there's something magic going on. So you start to investigate a little further, and all around you, this flame is burning and you can actually see like sometimes an arm sometimes like a face in the flame as it's like burning different parts all around you brothers this is not normal fire this fire is like alive and by alive i mean like there's a being in the fire 
and not just one, I would assume multiple beings, because I can see faces and arms in this fire, and it's not acting like normal fire, I'm sure you can see that, but it's acting as if it's like, it's jumping from building to building where normal fire would not ever be able to jump like that. So what I think you, so this what fire is, is so, like, it is a being, it's something, this isn't normal. So what you're saying is, is we didn't start the fire? It was always burning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. We did not start the fire. Not so you're taking yeah. off down the the <laughs> more fiery part, right? Correct? Has everybody agreed with that? Yes. All right. So as you guys take off down that way, I, uh, it actually opens up, the street does, and it becomes uh, a little less claustrophobic. The smoke still clouds your vision, all right? Uh, but this street seems relatively less uh, loud, and there's not very much sound besides uh, the weeping of two children. And we'll make my D20 just to chaw out, because I, it's not crazy important. So there's two children there that are just weeping beside uh, a, one of the bigger houses you've seen in the city. And they're, they're just like sitting there. <laughs> What is wrong, child? Why are you crying? <laughs> Mommy and Daddy are in the house. <laughs> we can't get, get in the house. Guys, their parents are trapped in the house. All right. Let me see if I can get uh, out. You want to try to... You want me to try to kick the door down and see if I can get in there? Yeah, if you can, that would be awesome. We just got to get their parents out of that house. I'll say, Winston, if you want to do something before... Dragon goes. It's your turn in the order. Yeah. Okay. But they're uh, crying, <clears throat> and they're all alone. It seems on so the street. So this is like a. I'm assuming this is a pure skill base. Do we know? Escape. So you can use like an attack. If no, you no, no. Like, I know you can spot. attack, but like. I say, kind of like misty step into the thing to get their parents. You're gonna misty step into the house. Yeah. So like, if their parents are in there. So the. Or is it I like? Mean, how does it, how does the house look? The house is on fire, but it, like relatively still put together, kind of like the other one. Yeah, the roof's on fire, and like <laughs> there's fire on the sides. Okay. But if you, I mean, you can you can missy step in, but you haven't even tried the door. Like, you can try the door too. Is what I'm saying. That's true. But All these right. these kids I'm are uh, very erratic. Like, All right, I'm gonna try to run in and get the parents. I'm just gonna run in the door. Okay, are you guys gonna follow them in? I'm going to stay out with the kids. The second says that she can stay with the kids if you want to go in the house. I'm going in the house. Anyone's following, Winston. You go through the door, uh, and the door it is open. There's not really any problem going through the door. Uh, and as you feel the door swing closed behind you, uh, you turn around and it has disappeared completely. And you're in this house that's smoking. And if you recall, in the last episode, there was another contract in town for the haunted house. And you guys have just stumbled into the haunted house that's now on fire. Really? Oh, man. <laughs> and every five minutes in real time that we're in this house, you'll take a level of exhaustion. So I'm going to start this right now. All right, so the only way is through? The doorway <laughs> has disappeared completely. Because of the smoke or because of, like, it just vanished? No, it's, yeah. the setup was yeah. to get you into the house. Those children. Yeah. I mean, the children didn't for exist. <laughs> All right. Work. Yep. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Damn you, awful good. <laughs> <laughs> The times when like it would actually work out for you to help people, you guys never choose to. But like the times when like it'll screw you over, sometimes you're just like, "That's the time for sure." Let's go. It's because we feel bad about the other times. Aww. Uh -huh. Lesson here: don't feel bad. <laughs> That's the moral yeah, right. of the story. <laughs> uh, so you have actually you're in a foyer, but there's no door on the the foyer level. What are you guys doing? How do we proceed? How do we proceed? I'm gonna cast, or I'm going to make an arcana check. 
And we're pretty much out of the skill challenge at the moment, guys. Just so you know. Yeah. Okay. I rolled 17 to check for, like, just magical presence in the house. So there's, uh, you can feel some malevolent magic throughout. Um, you can actually see there's paintings on the walls and they look very old, uh, but the paintings will turn from like happy or stern looking faces to like skulls and you notice them like as you're like looking around on the walls. And here's, so if we're, this is, let's make this the foyer, right? And that's where you guys came in from. It opens up into like a study room. Uh, and then on the far side, there's some stairs leading up. The three minutes, so we're at three minutes Guys, and 30 this is, seconds. Uh, this is not, there's some bad in here. We got to get out of here quick. Mm, yep. Uh, as I fast see, as possible. I see one way. Looks like stairs on the far side of the room. Let's take it. Let's do it. All right. So you're rolling upstairs? Mm -hmm. All right, you roll upstairs, uh, and there's like a little balcony, a little area that you can see from the upstairs. Uh, there's a hallway, and there seems to be three different doors in this hallway. And then at the far end, you can actually see a dumbwaiter at the very end of the hallway. You know, the thing that's always in the scary movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is never a good idea to use it, except they always use it. <laughs> Which maybe one of them they use to like save people. Uh, <clears throat> it was the one uh, yeah, I'm still in the Declaration of Independence. They used it. Uh, they used uh, the dumbwaiter yeah. to hide from the people. Not a scary movie, but not yeah. a scary movie. You're right. All right, so uh, you're on the second floor of this house. There's three doors in front of you. Uh, th down this hallway and a dumb waiter, which will say, I'm going to. He's anyone, here. Anyone's going over to the first door. Cast. Or not cast. I'm going to roll an investigation check on the door. See if I can. Any traps or anything. I rolled 12. There's no traps on this door. I'm going to open the door. Alright. It e opens. <laughs> and uh, as it opens, uh, you you see there's a nursery in this room, and there's a veiled thing that's over top of this uh, this bassinet, and there is a lump that is totally swaddled up. That looks like some type of child in this room, and there's a door that actually leads to this room too. Why would it have to be the good brother? <sighs> Winston, <coughs> Drago. Uh, there's a there's a baby in here. As your <coughs> oh yeah, that's on the fire. Yeah. Um, what do you say? What do you think? I'm not hey, going over there. Don't pick it up. There's a baby in there. <laughs> like, I don't even want to. I don't even want to go in the room. I opened the door, but I really don't. Do, we, go we, in the do room. we know this is the haunted house, or was that like? I feel yeah, like I as soon you as you stepped into it, you yeah, we, I just told you that there's like, um, yeah. I, yeah, okay. And plus, I told you that don't like, grab it. Let's we do go. not need to yeah, get it. No. We gotta find an we're, exit. We're sort of speed running this because yeah. you have a very limited amount of time. I don't see an exit. Uh, let's check the next rooms. We gotta find an exit. We gotta get out of here. It was a caretaker's room for the the baby next door, uh, but on the mattress uh, there's some really dry, withered bones uh, and all kinds of blood is like all over. Uh, the bed, but it's like ancient, like old. Okay. And there's some different pictures, uh, portraits hanging over their, uh, the bed, and they're all doing the same thing that Eowyn recognized before, where they would be like happy or smiling, and then they change again. Uh, everybody take one level of exhaustion, as it's been five minutes. Well, you said there's other doors in there? So there's a door that leads to the baby's room. <clears throat> Oh, to the but the, the other door is just the open one. Yeah, so okay. that's like the woman's then room and then the baby's room. We'll check room. the third door. All right, so the third door you open, it uh, looks like some kind of playroom. And there's an exact model of the house yeah. in this room. Is there a window in any of these? There's uh, windows in each of them. Oh, yeah? Let's yeah. just jump out of the window. Okay. That's, that's what I'm telling them to do. That's what we're so gonna which do. room are you going in to do the, the window jumping? 
Well, which one was the probably the second one, right? So that is the nursery room. Would we know which way we're facing? Like to jump out into the street? Yeah. Or was it? Or would we be like pretty much lost? So that that house was like a. <coughs> Okay. So like it wasn't, remember, it wasn't around other houses. Okay, so, so we're not going to like jump into another house no, no matter what we do. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's so, do it. You so want to jump out the window? Uh, are we kind of supposed to... I feel like we're trying to get out of this, right? Like, so, I mean, we like we're trying to go through, a, like it's on fire and we already have one level of exhaustion, you know? Yeah, I just feel bad because we can't find those kids' parents. I don't feel like those kids' parents are in here, bro. <laughs> like, this is a trap. Okay. Okay, I'll open the second one. Uh, so I'll be first, and I'll jump out, but then he goes behind me, and then Drago. You don't have to tell me twice. Let's get the all, flip out of here. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. Jumping out the window. All right, so you come, as soon as you, like, cross the threshold to where you're about to uh, get to the window, you can still go to the window. It looks like it's open. Not, like, open, open. It's closed, but it looks like you could jump out of it. Uh, there is a spectral figure that rises from the mattress of the bed and a roll to dodge Winston as your this thing is coming towards you 19 This thing is coming down and it almost looks like it wants to give you a kiss uh, But it's like sucking at the air as it goes give you a kiss. And you're able to do like the limbo and dodge out of the way as it is coming towards you you can continue on towards the the window or turn to face this creature. Do can you... I see the ground outside? Yes, you can. I'm going to teleport to outside. Uh, you don't have to roll to do that. You just did it. So I have to use a slot. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So he's out of the house now. Uh, you guys have it's this just... raid in there. Uh, you take <laughs> another level of exhaustion now as it's going. Not you. That was literally Sweet. right as it was ringing off. So, kid, get out of there. Get the flip out of here. Go. Jump out the window. I'm I'll take just... care of the ghost. Right. Oh, I am... no. I... That's not what I want to do. All right, I'm sprinting out. <laughs> All right, roll the dodge. This thing is gonna try to kiss you. It's just gonna try to kiss you. I'm gonna roll real. Twelve. So this thing kisses you on the on the lips, and you take six points of damage as it sucks at your face. Uh, but you're able to run past it and Wait. attempt to jump out of the window. Did it do damage to me? Yeah. Okay. Eight. I was wondering if I hadn't heard you. Yeah. You, 19, it was like really good to miss it. All right. So roll to uh, roll some strength for me as you're trying to break through this window. <laughs> Oh, I didn't break it, did I? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good job, Winston. Straight up, bounces off the window. Still the in the room. <laughs> All right, Drago's turn. I am still in the room, everybody. Nice. <laughs> All right. Can I use an a an action to throw a dagger at uh, the window to break it so he can jump out and then? So uh, this thing. So pretty much, just happened at the same time that it just sucked its face off and was running past. So you're able to run past unhindered now, pretty much. Okay. I grab, can, can I just... grab Aowen and jump out the window with me? Straight yeah, roll a strength check. Yes, 22. Yeah, so that's definitely going to do it. All, All right. right. I grab Aowen, and what it looks like is I'm running as fast as I can. I grab Aowen, and I look at him, and I go, what's up? And then we jump out. <laughs> All right, uh, and as hey, you, hit, you hit the ground and you tweak your guys' uh, ankles a little bit as you fall, you take three points of damage uh, from the fall. All right. But you've officially exited this house, so I can end this timer here. All right, and then uh, <laughs> you look up to the second who's still with the kids, and the kids dissipate uh, as you guys exit the house. I hate haunted houses. Screw them kids. I'm gonna heal. Okay, you have 15 now. Mm -hmm. Cause you're trace level. Yep. 15 lay on hands. That's so cool that he has that. I'm gonna heal nine, so I'm back up to four. Cause nobody else took damage. Well, you did. Phil did, but you got a lot, right? Or a good amount. 
So the, the next place that you come to, uh, it gets a little more claustrophobic again. Uh, you're, we're back outside. And you guys are actually near the headquarters of the Phoenix Fire. As you run past your, the hideout, uh, the door to the hideout actually explodes outward. And there's three figures that come tumbling out of the explosion. The two of which you guys recognize actually. So there's Garth, your uh, drunken buddy. Uh, there's Henrik. But your buddy, who's the, the goblin dude, mm -hmm. uh, and one other guy uh, comes rolling out with him. All right. Uh, and a fourth figure emerges from the wreckage, uh, and he is uh, robed in these crimson uh, robes, and he is actually charging up a fireball to throw down on these peeps. What do you guys do? Uh, I'm going to pull out my bow and try to shoot him in the face. All right, roll to attack as this guy comes out. Does a 17 hit? Oh, here he is. A 17 hit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's gonna hit. So you're able to smack this guy with the bow. Roll some damage for me. Uh, six. Six damage. All right, re remember that for me. Uh, now uh, we're gonna roll some initiative. Uh, 20. Ooh, cool. All right, you guys are gonna go first. I'll go. I cast Firebolt for 23. Oh, uh, yeah, that's gonna hit for sure. It was a one for damage. <laughs> one? A one. Uh, so he actually lets out his, uh, he opens his mouth and like puts his tongue out and he scoops up part of your firebolt and he says, the flames fuel me. All right, who's next? <laughs> nice try, kid. <laughs> hey, Drago, I'm doing my best. <laughs> he didn't actually, like he still took damage, but he's um, obsessed with fire. Yeah. Like, he Winston, loved you it. wanna go next? He was like, he was like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ouch, it burns, but no. It doesn't feel good, but I love it! Winston's gonna run up. I'm gonna stab him with the dagger. And it's gonna be a booming blade. Oh, 11 to hit. Alright, so dagger. you go to, the, to get him with the dagger, and he actually parries it away with his staff. Alright. Drago, your turn. Okay, I'm going to um, shoot the guy again with a bow. Uh, ooh, 24 hit? Would yes, it be disadvantaged because I'm in the way? Oh, uh, yeah, you are in the way, aren't you? Where are you at? Uh, well, I'm in melee range with them. Yeah, you would be. So, yeah, I rolled again well, another time. Uh, 12 to hit. All right, so that one's going to miss. So it goes whirling between uh, Winston and this guy. All right, uh, before he goes, though, the second okay. is going to raise her hand and so like just concentrate uh, and this wave of energy comes flying like out of her and each of you all are under the shield of faith influence so you have a plus to all of you to your AC at the moment. Sweet. Yep. That would make me strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My AC is terrible. <laughs> uh, for his turn, all he, what he's going to do is he's going to create uh, this flaming aura all around him and uh, anybody that's within his range is actually going to take 2d8 fire damage. So right. like you're saying this at least like going super saiyan? <laughs> yeah. So Isaiah you take 2 or 10 points my bad. 10 points of fire damage uh, from him. Alright and these guys are going to get up and uh, they're like right like they're repositioning themselves and they're actually all carrying weapons which Garth is usually a drunken bimbo. You're like, what? Why does he have weapons? But he's here. What does he wield? A hammer? He doesn't. He it's a, it's two swords, but he actually just has two big sticks nice. at the moment. Yeah. All right. Uh, and we're back to the top, which I think Aowen went first. So go ahead. Uh, I'm going to cast magic missile. Twelve points. All right. And then yeah, they automatically hit. Good. Um, All right, you turn. Okay. Or um, Winston. I forget who wants to. Winston, are you still in range? Uh, in the way. Yeah. Okay. I still would be. Um, can I, for an action, get close to him to hit him with the sword? Yeah, you can move up. Yeah, you can move Does up. Does he still him. have his flaming aura? Oh yeah. So then, you're gonna take two d eight when you enter. 
So then, but would you still do that? So he has to go before Winston, because Winston will be disengaging. Like, you know what? If, if, like after getting burned the last time, no. I'll be stepping back. I'm gonna use a yeah. bonus action to light my crown <laughs> right to put ice on my arrows. Okay, so you're gonna stay back. Yep. All right. So you can do that part, and then that's a bonus action, right? So you uh -huh. can still attack yep. with it. Bonus action, and I gotta roll. A D4. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I'm going to attack him with my bow again. Do you want me to roll for... Yeah, you got to roll to hit him. You got to roll twice though again because Isaiah's still on... Or Winston's still in combat range. Uh, does a 13 hit? Uh, yeah, this time the 13 will, will hit. So you can do your D6 plus your D4 there. Uh, okay. And I got a 9. Plus 1. Alright. So it's 10. Yep, got it. Alright, uh, Winston, your turn. Okay. I... I'm gonna step back. Who turned down the heat? And throw a dagger at him. Before I throw the dagger, I'm gonna make yeah, it a magic weapon. Okay. Um, so it'll have a plus one to its attack. So zero. Nice. <laughs> so 18 to hit. Uh, 17 plus one. Yeah, that'll hit. 18 to hit. So roll to some damage on that. And it's a plus one to damage to you, right? Mm-hmm. So... Well, 10 damage. 10 damage? Mm -hmm. Alright, so he's gonna say... He's gonna turn and raise his staff to the That's sky. Uh, and he says, Bane is the one true god! And he slams his staff down, and from the staff, the fire uh, erupts and it, in the line. And it's a 30 foot wide straight uh, line, and it's gonna hit. Me and uh, Aelin? Yeah, you and Aelin, probably. Alright. All right. And it just, uh, you guys need to make a dexterity saving throw to get out of the way of this thing. Okay. Nice, oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that since I don't have any pluses. I got a 15, but yeah, I don't remember what my thing is. I'll find it and then let you know. Aelin's the only one I think that has a thing to save it from it. Alright, so you guys both barely save. Alright, and instead of taking 32 uh, points of fire damage from this uh, flaming wall, you're going to take 16 points of fire damage from this wall as it spl springs forward and hits both of you. And it's there, still. Oh, Aowen's <laughs> down. I'm down. I'm gonna use absorb elements and roll a d6 to subtract from the 16. That's, okay. Is it a reaction? Right? Yep. Four, so 12 damage. <laughs> Which saved me because I had 16 left. Alright, I only got four HP left, boys. So these guys are gonna kind of hide behind you all and they're gonna shoot a volley from their short bows. Right. He starts throwing a stick. Yeah, he is not doing it. Actually, he has two sticks. Yeah. All right. And they're, they're gonna they're gonna take a they're gonna take attack there, and you will see a couple arrows pepper into him. But it's now your guys' turn again. So Aowen went first. So Aowen needs to make a, <coughs> a death save. Sixteen. Alright, one success. Dude, so I might be Winston Son of Bilbo, but I sure don't have any Healy stuff. <laughs> I do. You know, like, it, I never miss it when I'm doing cool things. And oh, then yeah. it's like, he's down and I have 4 HP, and I'm like, ah, we might die. <laughs> we will have to remember, guys, to actually, like, buy health potions when we're at shops and stuff. And short rest and stuff. Yeah. Yes, Drago, you're at. Right. But I'm no longer in the way. You're no longer in the way? Right. Yeah. Sweet. So you get no disadvantage. Alright. You're also in this wall of... Or you're right outside the wall of fire, because that fire has not gone away. Okay. So I'm gonna shoot with my bow again. So the 15 hit. He is actually going to raise his hand, and as a reaction, uh, his AC is gonna be a lot higher Ooh. for this round. Alright? But it... So he's gonna okay. block this. 
And he says, you fool! The liberation of the mind has already begun. <laughs> All right. Uh, listen, if you could just kindly get out of the way before we chop your head off, that would be great. Because obviously we all know how this is going to go. We're going to chop your head off and throw your body in a ditch. And we're going to forget about you and your stupid, what, God, Bane, is it? He's going to know your name. Matter of fact, no one here is going to remember your name. Strike me down and I will rise from the ashes like a phoenix from the fires. And he just is like loving all the fire that's around him. He's like, he gets off on this stuff. Uh, Psycho Sid, you're an idiot. Your turn, uh, <laughs> Winston. Alright, Winston, I'm gonna teleport right behind him a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna strike him with a booming blade dagger. Try. Last time I missed. <laughs> Try. <laughs> Try. Natural 20. Nice. Alright, so you're gonna take uh, six points of damage as you yeah. enter this fiery aura. Yeah, I forgot. But you are you are gonna actually cut him down too. Uh, and as you cut him down, uh, the flame is burning like the flames. Actually the spectral flame hands that Aowen saw earlier are, are actually grasping onto him. And he is like in like a, he's laughing and enjoying it as he is kind of getting eaten away by these flames and already got stabbed by you. Uh, and there's nothing left except for his cloak that's on the ground. Uh, are you up still, by the way? No, I'm down after that. Okay. So I would have like taken him down and gone down with the flames. Okay. I should have bit him because I would have regained hit points. <laughs> Hindsight. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then uh, Drago, the only person still up, can see that the his he's gone. The cloak is on the ground. Uh, but there is a flaming figure that is like where he was. They're not connected, but he is there. Uh, and you got two of your buddies on the ground, and then you got this group of people over here. Look, that log had a child. <laughs> that child. <laughs> That's good. That's great, dude. <laughs> I think we need to hide the bushes alone. We're getting kind of scared. So it would be uh, anyone's turn, right? Uh, yeah, Eowyn, go ahead and make a... Well, no, actually it's uh, the second uh, screams, The fight's not finished yet! And on yet, uh, everybody gets 10 points of health that can hear her voice. So what about unconscious? 10 points of health. <coughs> yes. Alright, so all of you get 10 points of health. And there's this fiery creature in front of you. But, Winston, you're... Straight up, right in front of this fight. <laughs> yeah, right. But the only thing left is the cloak that's on the ground by him. Eowyn, you are the first in the order, so you can go again. I'm okay. gonna cast Minor Illusion and make it rain. Okay, on this thing? Alright. Roll, uh. Actually, I'll roll. It's intelligence based. I was gonna say, <laughs> it's not really me. Alright, so th for this turn, what he's gonna do is he's gonna uh, kind of like actually cower down. So this monstrous creature gonna cower down like in the field position for a second as if it's about to rain. But he's scared. <laughs> yeah. Good job, I'm kid. Gonna rain. <laughs> Way to go. All right, uh, now it's uh, Drago, your turn. I'm going to uh, cast um, Blood of the Eyelid on him. Okay. And try to blind him. All right, so that's another uh, D4, right? Yep. And then for my action, I'm going to shoot him with my ice arrows. And I got a 17 to hit. Does that hit? Yeah, that's going to hit. Flaming fire does not have much uh, AC. He's not wearing armor. Six. <laughs> points all together, even with the uh, extra two for fire damage, or ice damage. So you did six, you yeah. have two ice? Yeah. All right, let me just keep on, give me that. So the ice, uh, the arrow pierces and like goes into him, 
uh, and he roars because he actually can feel it, but the ice stays on there and kind of crests and forms around a part of his fiery form. So it's, even though it looks like just a flame, it hits something solid. All right, uh, Winston, your turn. All right, I'm gonna drive a disorienting spike of psychic energy into his brain, and he has to succeed on an intelligence 14 or take psychic damage. Yeah, so he failed that. Okay, so he takes 1d6 psychic damage. So let me roll that. Five. So he takes five psychic and subtracts 1d4 from his next saving throw. Okay. Garth actually is talking to you and he says, We can't do anything! That There's a fire ele elemental, nothing but magic will hit that. But we're cheering you on. <laughs> Garth knows his shit. <laughs> Alright, Garth. Well, if you know how to get out of here, then maybe we could, you know, skedaddle. Did you move? I'm still right in front of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, so he's gonna well, it's kind of, to it. I kind of just got healed and I'm just getting up, you know? So, like, mm -hmm. it was kind of like just getting up and looked at it. Alright, roll the dodge thing. And as I. I was at 18, right? I couldn't see it. I think it popped up 18 real fast. Okay, I couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. then that's my roll. And as I do it, I'm gonna touch my necklace just to see what happens. So you're gonna try to use your necklace on this thing? Uh. It's a, so it's something that you're gonna have to use as an action. To okay, do. that's what I was wondering. Okay. All right. So like it's you hold it up and so the dodge. flamey force is gonna come right at. Are you gonna use it right now? Yeah. Okay. And one. Alright, he dodged it. Alright, roll it a second time. Another. As another fist com fist of cup comes down here. So it's a flaming fist that's coming down. Six. Alright, so that one you're gonna take ten points of fire damage. Alright, let's see if I can absorb any elements. Five. You rolled a five? Yeah. So right. how much was it? So five then. Okay. Take five. Another time or are we gonna do it? Alright, we got five left. Alright. Hey, my turn? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm going to cast magic missile again. So we have cigar and scriptures every Monday night. That's what I call it. It's just they call it cigar goggle study. I think it's so cool. I know it's cool. Right. Right. I know it's uh, two, four, all six points of damage. It's, it's like damage. This. Like, you shoot these magic missiles out. And they shattered the ice that uh, Drago had like placed on this creature, and it just like burst within it. All right, but uh, your little friend here, Henrik, screams to you and he says, "I'm always a uh, I'm always a fan of running away if that's an option, guys. Uh, uh, the town is pretty fiery at the moment. Just saying." Listen, bud. I don't know if you know this, but our family is born to hunt and hunt. We do. And at that moment, I shoot another arrow at the guy. Okay. Does an 18 hit? Yeah, it does. Okay. Nice. And an 8 plus. Come on, be a boy. 3, so 11 all together. Alright, same thing happens. The arrow goes through it, but leaves a trail of ice like all inside of it all right it's good. so you've opened up a wound inside of this beastly fire now there's some ice within its chest guys hit the ice form no. that's where the wound is i'm gonna grab my necklace and use it as an action i don't know like how i how would i you can describe how i how what would happen okay so it's uh <coughs> What's your spell, DC? Uh, like 14. So this thing, it actually becomes really calm as it peers into your blue amulet, all right? And it's just kind of sitting there and it's looking at you. Its eyes are not moving off of you, but it's not attacking. It's just staring right at you. Okay. All right, well that was my action. He turns it. Don't have a bonus action. It's his. Yeah, so it was his turn, and he's not doing anything. 
Mm. So he's like just chilling there. It's your turn now. Not, okay, that's what I thought. Nice. Uh, I'm going to. That's awesome. Gonna cast magic missile one more time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna be aiming at the magic chest this time. Magic missile one okay. more time. Oh yeah! <laughs> Fifteen. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, so this ice explodes all throughout this thing's chest. It takes a little bit extra damage uh, as the shards pepper through them. Uh, and it breaks eye contact with you as it takes this massive amount of damage. And now it's your turn. Drago. <gasps> Sucking my <Nice>. fire demon. <laughs> Who turned down the heat? Gonna shoot him right again. Just like forms the ice, breaks the ice, forms yeah, the ice, right. breaks the yeah. ice. Forms 16, the ice. 16 yeah. hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit. So. Nice. His AC is not great. <laughs> well, I have a problem because I have magic missile and thunderbolt or firebolt. I can't shoot a fire elemental with fire, so you can. <laughs> that's uh. Well, yeah, I can. <laughs> but I'm also smart enough to know that probably not a good idea. <laughs> What'd you get? Nine points all together. What was the uh, ice? Uh, right. One point. Okay. All right. So this this time the the ice does not go all throughout them, uh, but it you can see it kind of collide with them. The ice does, and the arrow passes through. All right, uh, Winston, your turn. Uh, your amulet glow dull like that. Okay. So it's um, just a one-time thing. <clears throat> I'm a kind of back and throw my dagger at this thing. It's just a normal dagger, right? It is a normal dagger. Okay. Natural 20. Natural 20? With the I'm normal sorry. dagger? <laughs> yeah. Alright, roll some damage on that. <laughs> That's so cool that it says 2d4 plus 5. Uh, 10. 1 plus 4 plus 5. Alright, so you, uh, are able with your natural 20 to find the one piece of ice that is still shoved inside of him nice. uh, and he and smack some damage on him but it was not uh, did not look like it hit him for a natural 20 worth of damage right because it was a melee weapon like a normal normal dagger and they just told me yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna do but I am gonna turn around and tell these guys after I throw it I'm gonna be like hang with us and we'll make you warriors and they're just like Hang, hang with us and get out of here with us. <laughs> There's more than this guy in town. All right, uh, and he is gonna he's gonna run, to, uh, well, float towards Drago here because Drago is oh, the one no. that's been shooting him with arrows. <laughs> and Drago, you need to dodge two times. Ooh. So roll two d twenties. Uh, ooh, twenty. Yeah. Oh wait, just saying. I really like the dodge aspect of it. Yeah, yeah me too. It doesn't make you uh, so pissed off at me when you roll that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yourself. <laughs> nice, I see That's a 20. Nice. All right, second. I got one more time. Yep. I rolled with a 16 on that. Uh, I gotcha. And then the next one, ooh, a 3. So I got hit with that. <laughs> 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 All right, so you... Uh, he dodges right hook right into the uppercut. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, son of a... All right, so you actually, uh, your fist this fiery fist collides with you and your cloak is on fire and you take 10 points of damage as it smacks Ooh. you good across the face and you're like burning a little. Okay. We're back to the top, so hey, when it's your turn. Is the second just chilling this whole time? She's watching what's going down? Uh, you feel her like, you can feel her power on you and you can also uh, okay. hear her muttering. So yeah. like, so uh, she's concentrating on something. Plus she's holding this mass uh, shield of faith that yeah. It's not even a spell. Yeah. <laughs> so Mash the paper. Show the paper. Yeah. Everybody and Oh yeah. dude, yeah, I forgot. We're plus eighteen. Mm. Like how many times do I get hit and I'm like, oh, I should have just shielded. Like it's the first level spell. It would last the whole round. Is it concentration? Yeah. I should be using it. So it lasts an entire round, so if you get hit like it's your first attack and it's like there's a lot of enemies you could use it to negate a lot of the damage yeah like if there's like six of them trying to hit you right because that put me does it combine with her shield of faith yeah so like it would put me at a 23 ac that'd be crazy hey when 
Yeah. What you doing? I'm gonna cast magic missile. Uno mas. Okay. Ah, oh, suck it. Nine. <laughs> Nine points of damage. Total? Total. This thing is getting close to being... It's, it's becoming a little baby flame. So like every time you smack it with magic missile and do the ice blast, uh, it's shrinking as parts of it get chipped away. Uh, it is your turn now, Drago. I look at the creature and I say, I know you're just burning to give me a kiss, but I think I'm gonna have to dash out to your flames. And I'm gonna shoot you again with my uh, arrow. Now, if you shoot him, you're going to take disadvantage because you're right next to him. I thought that would be, like, even better because you're not right regular, all right? <laughs> no, so, like, they're, they're in the way of your shot, pretty much. That's pretty, what it is. So, like, they're all up in your business. So you're trying to struggle and pull it back as this thing's swinging on you. So you're not going to pull it But it's so probably a smarter move. With the arrow and then slide it To just shoot it. Because you had that bonus and everything. Yeah, because I can't, I can't. If I pull my sword out, it's not gonna. It doesn't have the fire, uh, the ice effect on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the 15 hit disadvantage. Yep. The first one was a natural 20. Nice. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> gotta, uh, gotta be that, huh? It's a Ball never lies. <laughs> All right. Ball never lies. Shut. What did you roll for the normal yeah, damage? seven, so it's eight all together. Eight all together? Mm -hmm. Oh, you did just... All right, so this thing is going to get shot point blank range with your arrow. Uh, how do you kill it as this thing ceases to be? I shoot it. Um, he tries to take a swipe at me. I dodge back a little, and as soon as I do, I take a shot at him right in between, right in the chest. Yeah. All right, and it poofs out and turns into like uh, vapor and just explodes outward. It is no more. Uh, but Eowyn, as you guys are like in this clearing uh, in the center of town with all of this stuff going on around you, you guys, Eowyn in particular, because he investigated it at the beginning, uh, can see others of these like throughout the city. So like there's, right. there's more of them. Uh, there's also Deep city, the, everybody. Yeah. There's also the cloak lying on the ground, and um, you're with the other group. I'm gonna say, Garth and Henrik, show us the show us the fastest way out of town. Yeah, let's, we've got to get out. Let's get out of here. You don't have to tell me twice. Come on, guys. Oh, uh, here. And he throws a, a little flask of beer at you, uh, and he's like, my favorite customer. Uh, <laughs> I'll catch it. And Jake Garth looks like really, thing. really upset. Not now, it. kid. Not now. Oh, it's, it's too late. I just right. slammed that flask as fast, fast as I could. I'm going to grab the cloak before we leave. Okay. I'm going to grab it. Is the second coming with us? Yeah. Uh, and she looks pretty uh, exhausted as she like leaves with you all. She looks exhausted. I'm on second level. Awen's on third. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they lead you out of town safely, away from the fire. Uh, you're able to save a few different people that are grateful as you leave town, uh, but you are like on the outskirts of the city now. You can finally breathe a little bit. Uh, the fire is uh, quickly eating away a lot of the other buildings. Uh, uh, the, the group that is with you at the moment uh, is breathing heavily and pretty winded. And the one that you don't know uh, turns to the others and is like, this is not what I am used to anymore. I, I'm, I'm way too uh, lazy and used to a very easy life. Uh, and now my shop goes and burns up. I don't, I don't have that anymore. And they all nod in agreement trying to catch their breath. All right, what are y'all doing? Um, I am looking for traps to see if I can find where they took the kid. Okay, it's super easy because uh, they're navigating the road, the main road, because they have like a convoy pretty much. Uh, so you can see the wagon tracks. There's a good amount. I'll say you can tell there's around uh, around five horses and like a around a dozen or more people that are walking down this with a couple wagons that are going down. 
I it's found out. the uh, I found the wagon tracks where they're taking the kid. You can go this way. Let's do it. Lead the way. Hey, um, do you guys do you guys want to come with us? Uh, they took I mean all these kids from your village, and obviously Dagger's Edge is no more. I mean I can't promise riches or that it's going to be a comfortable road, but um, if you come with us, we're going to go get these kids back. It's it's been a long time since uh, we've actually had any share of combat. Like we we this is not what we've been about. We've been retired for a good long time, as uh, Garth kind of has told you. He's been sitting in my bar uh, for a while. <laughs> well, um, you guys are rusty, and we're pretty green. Uh, maybe you can teach us a thing or two, and we can all pull our own weight. But the more hands, more hands, lighter work. Guys, we gotta hurry. Let's go. What say? You wanna roll some persuasion for me? You're having this conversation. Eowyn is slowly doing this with food over his shoulder, <laughs> and then the food disappears, and then he does it again, <laughs> and then the food disappears. And, and, you're still, and you're feeling a little bit light-footed because you uh, had a little ale while you were running. 15. That's yeah. accurate. And he's also learned, uh, uh, Gur is learning to uh, hide himself better, so he's being a little more sneaky, even though he's white. <laughs> but he's just like kind of like still being like in the pack, grabbing stuff from you. So, and they, uh, so, all of them they kind of get together and they they talk amongst themselves. Like, uh, Garth holds up his finger to you, and he says, oh, "Just a second. And they kind of held on together. They're debating back and forth. And uh, this guy looks pretty frustrated, and he like turns and is like kind of gives him a mean look, but Garth says, well, uh, I guess we can, we can help out. Uh, this is not, the Bonus Brothers are not coming out of retirement, all right? We'll, we'll help this, uh, get the kids back, and then we'll be on our way. Okay, at that, Eowyn turns to Garth and goes, the Bonus Brothers? Okay, there's got to be a story behind that, and I want to know what it is. Uh, <laughs> can we walk and talk? You guys are having that conversation, and you see Drago's kind of all the way, already making his way up the up the road. He kind of left. He's like, <laughs> Drago's like, they'll find me. Because I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I'm not too yeah. far. I'm just letting them. I don't want to lose them. Is kind of what. And I know Winston and Eowyn's got it under control with the party. Okay. So I was just trying to make sure that I, I do a well, good job as a tracker. All right. And, uh, I think that makes sense for you. I feel like yeah. you wouldn't want to have that conversation. You'd want yeah. to go. Yeah, I'm just like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like they got it. Uh, the the uh, the See dwarven figure there. Uh, he actually is told by Henrik, the bartender. He's like, Henrik, uh, hey uh, Zuri, uh, go up there with a. Uh, oh, what's your, what's his name again? Drago. Drago, and uh, give him like your, you know, a little bit of your info you know about the order. And, and just let them know what's going on. And so he's got to run up to you and, and tell you, like, how convoys move typically. Okay. And he says, like, he's pretty much like, the convoy is, is very uh, slow. Uh, we will be able to catch this up very easily. So okay. uh, if we want to rest for the night, they will rest too. And then we can catch them later. Good. Tell them we follow them until they rest. Oh, you want to catch them then rest? We want, yeah. Is that what you, is that, is that what you when want? They, we, no. <laughs> no, no, you, you're confused or I confused, I don't know. I, I think I'm I'm from deep north, okay. I don't know. Uh, so do we want to rest now? Or do we want to wait until after the battle? Well, we'll, want, I was, we'll want to hike out of town, but then rest. I would say that we want to attack them when they rest. When they go down for nighty night, but we, we can do that. Them. We can do that the next time they rest. You know, like we can rest tonight to like hike out away from town, rest, then catch up to because they're gonna rest tonight too, right? Yes. So then we'll just know we know we're a day behind them. Can we either way. have a? I got an idea. All right, let's hear it, bro. I don't believe we're a day behind them. We might be a couple hours behind them, but I don't believe that we're a day behind them. Uh, they left town right as you guys were breaking out of the 
Yeah, so like we're a couple hours behind him. We're not crazy behind. I didn't think so. Yeah. Uh, So we're not that far behind him, and I'm saying if we can catch them the first time that they're resting, they're not going to expect us to be there. Now it may take us into the night a little bit, but I feel like we'd have a better chance of surprise if we can catch them as quickly as possible. I am not feeling great right now. I, got I could you. use some time to I can recover. Hear how long? How do you know where they're going, little friend? I'm talking to Siri. Uh, so this one. So the second's gonna come up and say we have a, a limited time before the uh, lich. Uh, assault on the tower so I mean I'm all for saving these people but we're about a a week and a half's journey or a week's journey away and we have about a week and a half before the battle is supposed to take place that is provide a distraction for us so um, if you just keep that in account and then also you know from the conversation you ever heard from above in the in your little hideaway that you were in before uh, the fire started. Oh, that they're right. taking them yeah. to Knight's Landing. So, and does anybody know how super far, far Knight's away. Landing is? Super far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So they got plenty of time. That's so, what I'm saying. And if we know, if we know we're going to be right behind them, yeah. we can trail behind them, rest tonight, because they're going to have to rest tonight. So we can rest tonight. Yeah. Even if, and then eventually, just so get my, a lead on them, so set my up an idea ambush. Was thinking that we only had like a few days to get to the Lich King. But knowing that we have a few days of extra time here. And it's going to take them forever to get And to. it probably will only take us a day to get catch them and do what yeah. we need to do. Yeah. I say then we rest first and then attack. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because I know all of us are really means we got levels of exhaustion we got to well, get rid of. Yeah, and if, we, well, we know they have to, we know their destination. Yeah. So what we can do is get ahead of them and set an ambush. You know, once we get rested, because they have, it's a long journey. more than week, a week. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's a long journey, long journey, so we can gain on them little by little, right? And then get ahead of them. Are we assuming that Knight's Landing is also where we're going to fight the Lich King? She also said... Because if it's when, the opposite direction, we do not have time to travel south and north or east and west. So the, the Lich's Tower is sort of on the way. Not completely on the way to Knight's Landing. I would say... It is south too. Yeah, so I think we can because we will travel faster than a whole two, caravan. So we're killing yeah. two birds with two stones. Yeah, only, yeah. One yeah. If we the travel only reason at night when they're resting, we can slit their throats. Yeah, their sleep. That'd be awesome. All right, so we discussed it, and we, if you're okay with that, that's what we're gonna yeah, do. We're gonna board. rest, and then we're going to try to kind of get ahead of the convoy in a stealthy manner to attack them to try to plan an attack when they rest again is okay. kind of what we're going to do. All right. So you guys can travel as far as you... So how far are you going to travel this night? Or are you just going to get out of town and just rest? Just however far it would be safe. He would, yeah. know, he would know where, like, once we get to an area okay. that would be safe. So you're going to find a good spot now. Yeah. All right, roll a survival check for me. Okay. All of us? No, just him. Just once, because it's not like you're tracking a monster. Okay, survival. Rolls it to you. There's no firewood anywhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> freeze it. Cold night. It's like freaking cuddle for No, one. and no one gets a rest. Little spoon called it. <laughs> I got a 15. All right, so a couple things that are able to happen as you're walking on your way, and you guys can have conversations if you want as you're walking. Uh, one is that... The more you look at these tracks, the more, the more you notice uh, something else that is a part of these tracks. Uh, it's a bigger footprint. Well, you've had dealings with them before, so it's oh, yeah. a gold uh, size you footprint fire right? and that was stuff. mixing with they're the tracks of the, uh, yeah, they're mixing with the tracks of the wagon. So there's an iron golem that is uh, with them. Um, and then also you find a really nice little cave area that you can sleep in that it's like no one, you can tell with your vast uh, nature knowledge that nothing has made this its home. It's just like a good spot to nice. have camp. Good job, bro. Sweet. Good job. We got a little cave. All right, rest it is. 
So with the long rest, do all of our levels of exhaustions go down, or does it only go down to one level? No, it goes down all the way. That's part Sweet. of it. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. So are you guys gonna talk at all before you rest, or you gotta? Uh, Aelin slides over to Garth. Kind of does one of these, like. Mm. Uh, uh, what is it? What can I do for you, little buddy? And uh, as we walk away from there, everybody else, Aowen looks at Garth and goes, You got any more of that ale? <laughs> uh, I'm all out, and I'm pretty sure that my... I thought pal, Henrik, there uh, gave you the last of it, which I am very disappointed in with him. <laughs> that was the last of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, Garth, my apologies. I would have shared if I had known. Mm -hmm. I am sorry. And uh, he has his two little wooden stick things. Uh, kind of leonardo on his back. So he has like two across his back, one on each side. Uh, Garth, I gotta ask a question. Mm -hmm. Do you not have swords? You got, I, I mean, I'm not one that's all weapon fancy, but you're holding sticks. I've been out, I've, I've been out of the game for a long time. Uh, the only reason, the only reason we retired was because I had had my fill of killing and I'm not gonna pick it up again now, so. I'll, I'll do my best to keep people at bay. I can do all right with these sticks, but uh, I'm not going to partake in the bloodshed. Understood. Understood. And then... Well, I'll walk back into the kit. We go yeah. back into the kit. All right. um, I'm standing outside the cave a little bit just to make sure everything's okay. You know, nobody can come up on us. And I'm smoking a cigar and sharpening my my blade and I kind of mimic for Winston to kind of come close to me. Okay, as you're doing that, uh, like at the mouth of the cave, literally this dude here, uh, the dwarf is doing the same thing. So you like, you're on one side of the cave, he's on the other, and you guys are like doing the same thing and you kind of slowly notice that you're both doing the same thing. But to you're Winston. just like looking at each other. <laughs> Not the Winston part, but both of you are, are sharpening your stuff. Both of you all are checking to make sure everything's good. And like stuff like that, it, <laughs> you, like he gives you like a weird look, and you're like, hmm. yeah, Drago kind of looks at him weird, like really, and then just kind of looks over at uh, uh, he gives you a similar swing. weird look, and then he looks back outside. Yeah, I think you're looking for, for gestures. Stuff. Yeah, so I give a, I like, give a gesture to um, Winston to come come to me. Okay, like he notices, comes close, and I uh, look at Winston and I say, hey. I trust you guys. I think so. I think they, I think we were meant to find them. I think they're a good crew. I think they can really help us out. I trust Henrik. With, yeah. my, <laughs> with my life. They've yet to do us wrong. Accurate. You know, they told us to get out of town and they were right. I mean, we would have been <coughs> toast. As long as the second's cool, I think we're cool. She's our strider. Yep, 100%. <laughs> Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So yeah, how I do you, trust these guys. How you holding up with your vampire abilities? Um, doing all right. My bloodlust has worn off from that fight earlier, but it's pretty, it's pretty ravaging when it comes on. What about you? How you feeling? Honestly, it feels like there's a burning rage inside of me on fire. Yeah. Not like a smoldering fire, but like a rage fire. One that's always uh, there? Yeah. Also. Hold you, like you feel like you can uh, just tap yeah. into it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I say the next, also, I say the next I thing will, we I'm get into, we're just sitting there smoking our pipes. I say the next thing we get into, oh, since so you just let the wolf loose. Honestly, okay. I almost, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost lost it back. when I heard Lord Ember's hey. in the room. Same. All I know is we got to get this cake. So yeah. Trying to, like, With everything we got, like, yeah. we can't leave this kid to live a life of torture to trust that and enslavement. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah. out of his back yeah. I think we get all these kids get back, and, and, let and I think we trust these guys with them. So. But I say we take that kid with us. Agreed. And that's all we said. All right, so you guys are kind of chilling out there. He's chilling on the other side of the, the mouth of the cave. We have uh, a fire going. I'm assuming we'd have a fire going. Yeah, this is not a sealed room like the tower before, so <laughs> uh, it's just totally okay to do that. Uh, the fire is like 
smoke's coming out the entrance. So I, I, little, I, I come back walk. and sit next to the fire, mm -hmm. and uh, I kind of open my backpack, and Gurf pops his head up out of the backpack, and I kind of coax him out of the backpack to let him stretch it out a little bit and run around and feed him and stuff while he's out. Uh, the, these two actually are kind of taken aback here. They don't know how to act. Garth Sorry. Uh, turns to Henrik, he's like, I, am I going through withdrawals already, Henrik? What, what is that? And, and Henrik's like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, but the second is like, she comes and sits cross-legged beside you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see actually faint little veins that are popped like on her hands and stuff as she like asks for some food from you. So she's like to, to feed uh, Gur too. But there's like these little black veins that you have seen on the spell plague people before uh, uh, that she says may I it's may the first I feed? time we notice it yeah because she's Dang. like tried to cover most mm -hmm. of it she's like may I feed may I feed him I've heard so much about him I just would like to feed him yeah sure you can feed him just uh, let him come to you okay <laughs> and she's, don't that rush was, him I don't know what good. he'll do that was good advice I'm still learning that out of him <laughs> Uh, while he's feeding, or while she is feeding her him, uh, I kind of go to Winston and tell him about what I saw on her hand. Okay, so she, he goes to you guys too, so you're all together now. Yeah. And Gur's just sitting there staring at her like, I Is Gur going to take the food? <laughs> I think if she, if she doesn't approach him and just hold it out to him, I think okay. Gur would go. Yeah, that's what she's doing. She's okay. just like Gur sitting. Gur would, Gur would yeah, he, I feel like he's yeah. a hungry boy. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Like he's a chomp. Oh, yeah. All right, the, you guys are together, so you can. Uh, uh, she, she has those black veins. You think she has a spell plague? I think so. We have to cure it. She's hiding it well, but it's uh, it doesn't look as bad as we've seen, but it doesn't look good either. We have to find a cure, not only for, our, not only for my dad, but for everybody in Terra. Yeah, I agree. She's helped us so much. It's not. We can't turn our back on everybody. Yeah. For the greater good, I think we have to stop this lich yep. and find out where the source of the power is coming from. Yep. All right. We gotta do this as fast as possible tomorrow, then. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys are, if you're good, you're good, you guys can go to bed. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah at that, I would turn around and go back to the fire and curl up with Gary and go to sleep. All right, <coughs> now, for time's purposes, and just because there's not a lot to following a road, all right, you uh, catch up with this uh, convoy pretty quickly, all right? And in the convoy, it's still, like, off to the distance where you're not disturbing anything. Uh, and you can proceed however you would like or go around it and set up something on the other side uh, how like you were talking about uh, But there's two big wagons that are being drawn by a pair of horses each uh, okay. There's a couple of people in each wagon uh, But there's like four guys out in front that are marching along. There's two uh, horsemen on each side okay. And then there is uh, a crimson golem that is bringing up the rear. So there's a total of 12 soldiers of varying sorts and one iron golem that is with this convoy. So they've, you fell the tree. Yes. I'm saying this because it was paused the entire time. I don't know how far back it was paused. So you oh. fell, you, you caused them to set up camp by this waterfall area, all right? Uh, and they, they're all set up, the, the horses are unbridled. Uh, you guys are up on, at the top of this waterfall and you are planning to shoot a minor illusion behind the waterfall by mm -hmm. where you are at, mm -hmm. right? Coming off that side. But it's gonna be, okay. I mean, it's not gonna be direct because I don't want them to have yeah, to come straight. This, it's gonna yeah, be- this is farther than it looks. I yeah, think. and then where are you all, like where's everybody gonna be at, like the people? You can put them wherever you'd like. Okay, okay so, so. Th uh, at least two is, are gonna be at the top or behind the waterfall. So when the illusion hits, they can cause battle noises. Is that what uh, Drago and Drago Zuri and Zuri are going to be doing that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. How many of them are going to attempt to clear the tree debris? So 
for now. No Me and the second now. are like they're in the bushes chilling. by you guys. Okay, okay. Because they're they're just like, well, this is we'll wait and do it. Yeah, I guess. No, no, I guess. They're just setting up their little. Nice. No, no, no. That's area. awesome, dude. I'll get so you. So like just, standard, that's awesome. standard crimson order. Well, yeah. slash military protocol. they this is where they're staying the night, so they're gonna make sure it's secure, and then they're gonna just chill, and then figure out the tree thing in the morning. All right. To these guys right here, I'm gonna be like, dude, they have the wagons unhitched. I'm not gonna be able to steal the whole wagon. Mm -mm. Do I just get the one kid? I feel like that's so wrong. Like, to leave the other, however many are in there. Can we see how many of them go towards the distraction? And then if Henrik can go with you, kind of around the back, to help. To help saddle up. We'll play by ear. How many of them go towards the sound? I could. I've well, never tried. Is... I've never tried it before, but I can probably make both of us invisible. If I really tried. Okay, so let's. Uh, Listen. That's the plan. Whatever we gotta do to get the kids out. I agree. Do it. Best plan by Drake from Spotify. I said, listen. That's what she said. All right. <laughs> My bad. That's funny. That's, that's funny. funny. God's plan God's, by Drake. No, God's that's plan. not what we want. God's if I have to God's wolf plan. out God's to get plan. them to chase me at the last thing, that's what we're gonna do. Well, that's the thing. If you guys can, as they're coming through the woods, they're gonna kind of search you know and if you guys can just take them out one by one if it comes to that you know like that's last resort your goal is like just lead them farther away if possible okay you know like got you. avoid it if possible because the thing is if you get them all to come to you i can take the pack horses and me and him can saddle up the wagons and bounce and we'll have wagons and horses and they'll just be I mean, they'll still have horses to chase us, but also, we'll hey, be able to get, you know, like also, we'll be able to get on the road and get out, and get away. Go. Brothers, we wait. also have to remember, it's getting dark. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of light to see as far as them being able to see, to see us. us. We yeah, can use it to have, our advantage. Mm -hmm. yeah, to remember the and they don't even up. know what they're looking for, so. And my wolf part. can see in the dark. Right. We have a lot of advantages going for us. In this should the second come with me, or should Henry? This is Henrik here. Uh, yes, let's have the second come with you. That'd be yeah. a good, just in case. And Henrik, Henrik and Garth are going to stay with them. They're a last like, stitch, yeah. just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're in a spot where they can come forward quickly if needed. And right. they are they're, in a spot that they can... Either way, they can and go. come yeah. around to run from, so the noise follows, so they carry, or they can stop and come through. Yeah, yeah I agree. My question, DM, is I would like to wolf out. But I know I have to make a DC saving throw. That's only at half, remember? Okay, so I should be good if I wolfed out at this moment? Yeah. Okay. Will you be caught? You're conscious when you're in wolf form, so you'll still be able to make battle to noises and all. Well, like, he to, doesn't know that. To a though. point. Or, but yeah, that's something we've talked about outside of yeah. the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, the way this is going to work is since they're smacking their swords and helping you, you get to roll a deception check, Eowyn, but with advantage. Okay. To see how well this uh, nice. illusion happens. The deception check. That's not a saving throw, is it? That's just Let's a skill. Because if it's like it's terrible, it's a skill. A skill. Yeah. It's like, what was that? Uh, it was a squirrel or something. <laughs> it was like, there goes the plan. <laughs> I think the plan is, is well thought. Yeah. You guys have well, with advantage. Yeah. You guys have done a really good job. If it goes south. <laughs> we'll do what we always do. <laughs> Improvise. <laughs> Alright. So the sounds that you're making, so go ahead and do whatever you sound you were making at first. Alright, hey, so the, the first illusion would be Lord Ember. Um Should put this like and, over here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh it's gonna be his big booming voice. And the first sound is going to be, You fool! You think you can best me? And then clanging of metal swords. Bang! Alright, so you guys are clanging together. Uh, these people here by the fire hear it. Uh, and they're actually going to turn and yell, My captain! Something happens in the wood! It sounds uh, like battle! Some kind of battle noises! Doesn't sound like a Lord Ember to them, though. 
Okay. All right, but there, these four are gonna go investigate. So there's four of them that are going into the woods to investigate this with your roll. All okay. right, they're taking their horses aren't with them, but they're going off that way. Okay. All right, what are you guys doing? As this is a minute long of you. Yes. Well, I mean, it's a cantrip, so you can do it as long as you want. It's not like it just. Oh, yeah, are these guys are these guys good. mounted? Uh, no, they are not mounted. Right horses, now. Okay. They left their horses behind. So. All right. So there's like eight horses drinking from the river then. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, and they're actually they're headed exactly to where the clanging is, which is right where you are, mm -hmm. Winston, with the second still. Yeah. All right. What are you guys gonna do? I'm gonna touch. I'm gonna like touch the shoulders of the second, and twin invisibility. And we're both gonna go invisible. That's your uh, twin spell. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are both invisible. I see them going invisible. I. See the second part of the illusion hits. Where this time I say. I, Lord Ember, cannot be bested by any mortal. And they're, they're getting closer now, so they're probably like 30 feet away from uh, where they're going to be climbing up. And they say things like, This thing, this this thing in the woods says it's Lord Ember. Doesn't sound like him, though. What's going on? Wait, it does sound like him. I can mimic. Yeah, but the deception part of it is... Oh, okay. So like whether how or not well they, whether or not they it. believe it. Yeah. I get you. So okay. like that's why. You I'm, no, no, no. I'm tracking. Yeah. I, I'm with you now. It makes sense. Yeah. I just I haven't played a wizard before, so I'm still, no, I still learning how. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. No, right. no I'm with you. I've never either. Okay. All right, and so uh, as the, they're coming up there, this dude, the captain, is uh, actually going towards this wagon and goes inside this wagon. Uh, also, while well, they are moving in that second part, we are moving around the back of the waterfall to create space. Okay. Does that make sense? Are right, Drago and Zuri going to keep clanging as they go that way? Mm-hmm. Alright, uh, so you're on the other side of the... We're on the floor. back of okay. the yeah. Yeah. Garth and Henrik are just like hiding as well as they can. Yeah, just at they're the top in the, of the bush. Waterfall. Yeah. In bushes at the top. Yeah, like right. Bedded down, waiting, yeah. Alright. So what are you guys doing? We're we'll say it's on you all now. Okay. We're going to sneak over here. Like, uh, and we'll say that you guys have devised some kind of signal. Actually, just probably just screaming. Twice if like a barn owl. Bad. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Screaming if things go bad. Two hoots like a two barn owl. Two, two hoots they... like a. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can't really. I will put him over here so you, just so you can see it. Sound. But we're sneaking still. So. Got monsters first sailing right. right now. I kind of gonna see down. if we can. We're invisible really still, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Concentrating. Uh, I'm gonna. She's like, kind of looking over here. I'm gonna peek in, see what's in this wagon right here. All right. So in this wagon that you guys see, you uh, you can see a good amount of a chest full of different like gold pieces and things like that. All right, and there's like some supplies and things like that in this wagon. No kids. Alright, I'll tell a second. Wrong you wagon. You guys saw, you That's did see as you're walking around this way that this guy, the captain, went into this wagon. Oh crap. Okay. So I tell, I'm going to tell her that too. And we'll kind of sneak over this way farther. Two shots of the tank. Like how far would we go during this turn? So that was so this like, is because we kind of moved over because we moved like from here to here and then looked mm -hmm. and then would like to right there be it yeah. or could we, or could we look in that wagon too? No, that's probably where like it's not you're not in combat or anything yet. So now these guys are on top. Are you guys moving further away? Anyway? Yeah, they're trying to like so, yeah, draw we're them. Drawing, we're trying yeah, to draw. We're yeah. trying to draw. So you're going as far out as you can. So yeah, so people. we're. You can kind of loop. Uh, so we're looping around to like, my goal is to loop to where we're kind of okay. behind the tree. Is that? Gotcha. So mm -hmm. I will cast the last part of the illusion here, the last part of, and then we're going to bolt. Okay. Does that make sense? Because yeah, it's like dark here, and in the then woods. Way off, then uh, way off. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. All right, so they're on top. You guys can move further around if you'd like. Okay. So the next really? part of the illusion, I'll scream. Uh, this time it's a scream of duress. Okay. Of like, uh, there's no way any mortal could do what you are doing now. 
and then like a very like ah. Yeah. So what are you doing now? I'm gonna look. We're gonna sneak over here, and I'm gonna look in this wagon, take a little peek, climb up on the back. I mean, it's not like they can see me, but I'm gonna look. look what you see as you look into this this wagon is uh, there's a group of like seven kids and the baby. One of the kids is carrying them, huddled uh, the, that on baby? one side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one side of the wagon. Uh, there is the captain guy uh, in the middle of the wagon, uh, and he is standing in front of what looks like a probably teenage uh, corpse right, that is like, like completely uh, well it looks a lot it looks like it was why would there be a very old skeletal teenager in the middle of the wagon doesn't make sense uh, but you see that the the sword is f like fresh with blood and there's runes on it that are lighting up as he is like muttering some kind of incantation uh, I like that I go down in a second, I'm like, he's killing the kids, what do I do? I'm asking the second what she thinks. I go and whisper. Should we, is it time to alarm or should, how do we get them out of there? I don't know. As you're talking, uh, are you still like, you have eyes on the wagon or you know, you're She down. would, but I probably would have like, I would have like just turned around, you know, to talk to her. Okay, so she says he's leaving, and he's uh, so the kids are still in the wagon, but he is uh, outside the wagon now, uh, just looking for anything that's unnatural, and because he was told about the group that went off, uh, and his sword like flames up like it is now. At this oh, point. Oh goodness. He motions for the golem, and the golem comes to him, and he's about to tell the golem something, but, you know, I mean, he, that's about where you're at now, so okay. your decision. Uh, Actually, we'll do this first, so if you want to you wanna move over again. Well, the final part of the illusion is just a blood-curdling... <sighs> and from... And then a... As he goes quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so far, it's going to according to plan. Yeah. yeah. Besides yeah, yeah, yeah. the horses. So you would know yeah. that me and Zuri and Drago are pretty close to within like a hundred feet of you behind the down tree. Right. But all these soldiers are still in no, the camp. I know, I know, so I can't you, like steal the horses. Have the no but you would have the knowledge that we're close enough to hear you. Yeah. Um. Is it dark time? Is it? Oh, it's oh, yeah. They yeah. couldn't see oh, yeah. us. Where we're at, they can't see like, us. We, we waited until like, past all dark dinner. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah. Uh, you do, the only light probably is coming from his sword and the campfire. Yeah, you, and you guys can now see that probably from where you're at. Okay. Okay. If you give the order, Chaga will come running. Winston and the second, after seeing this, are going to like, we're going to know kind of where they are. So we're going to kind of go over there in the woods and try to find them. Okay. And then like lead them over to like right here area, like where this would be. Oh, so, so you came and got us and you moved us. Like, yeah, kind of like. Yeah, no, that makes okay. sense. Yeah. That way, like we could talk about it. And right. that way, I will tell you to. And that's what I kind of hope that you would do. This is where they heard the dying? This yeah. was the last, that was the, that was the dying. Okay. Okay, let's see how smart these dudes are. They're gonna spin a few rounds over there. Of whatever we decide. Have a piece of the tree. All right. So you guys are together, besides your two backup uh, on the edge here. And I, I would probably lose con concentration during this conversation we're gonna have. Like right. we would, we would reappear when we came and got you guys. So Winston, what's going on? Uh, the kids are in the wagon, closest to us. Closest to us? Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of guards over by the other wagon. One but guy. the golem, and the main, the leader, are over here with a bunch of other guards. Okay. So. I'm, I want to move to position myself to light that other wagon on fire, Winston. But I don't want to do it to where they can immediately, they're going to know where the fire bolt is coming from. Yeah. But I don't want them to know it's coming from where we all are. I want to go out to where I'm far enough away where I can hit the wagon, but not close to you guys. Okay. 
because it's still dark. I can see pretty good in the woods by myself. I can probably outpace these guys to get back to you guys after I light this wagon on fire. I believe that you can, especially okay. if we have a rendezvous point. The only thing is, behind the trees, if they're gonna, they're gonna know as soon as that you light it on fire that they're under attack. Oh, immediately, yes. At this point, they don't know they're under attack. True. That they don't even know. They don't even know we're all here. Yeah. That is accurate. Very true. They're just searching in the woods. So, so if as soon I as the military it on fire group until goes, it was the last ditch. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right, and these guys make their way back over while you guys are talking, because they investigated and they're coming back now. All right, and so they're like, "My lord," and like, there's a conversation that's being said, or my captain, captain. Mm. All right. Uh, how many kids uh, were in the back of the wagon? Seven. Seven, seven. now. And a baby. Right. How many of us are there? The seven. The baby is one, two, addition three, four, to five, seven. Six. There's seven of us with Henrik and... There's no way they would be Charles. able to get a baby to carry that. But we could... Most of the kids can run by themselves, right? Because they're like... They're raging in age. Yeah. Aging... So Ranging yeah. in age. A couple of little ones and a, some teenagers, I'm assuming. Hey, but they, they're they already carrying the ones you can't want. If I go into werewolf form, I can howl and get their attention and get them on me. Okay. I can outrun them. There you go. Then you two take Suri, go over here, and howl. Don't take Suri. We need him. You two run over here. I'm not going to be able to kill and, you, kid. Right. You, <laughs> shoot, the, you shoot the firebolt. You wolf out, so you shoot the firebolt from like somewhere, and you wolf out and get him to follow you somewhere else. Got it. I can do this. As long as you get away, brothers. He can the ultimate away. goal is making on, it back together. I say I can jump on his back and we can run. So let's just we'll make a plan that says we meet deck down the road somewhere. Down the road, farther down the road from the tree. Yeah, yeah, a way a, where that where they would have to clear the tree to get to. Because us. we're not going to take the wagon anymore. No, we're no, just no. going to get the kids yeah. and tell them to run. So somebody has to get Garth and Hendricks to the tree. Did anybody put that cloak on that you guys got? By the way. Uh, yeah, I think most of them. I grabbed oh, it. I grabbed, grabbed it. it and threw it in the bag. I didn't put it on there. Yeah, I was just wondering. The uh, the horses are unbridled. We could steal a couple. Get the kids. Jump on. Get away, perhaps. I was thinking that too. That worked. Plus, even if we just we kick the horses down the, the road. Henrik and Garth are there. Yeah. And the horses would be able to go through the force better than pulling it by themselves than they would be pulling it. Okay, I think this is the plan. Let's, I'm ready if you guys are. I'm ready. Let's do it. Listen, this is it. Don't get scared now. And at that moment, Dragon wolves out. Alright, so are you gonna wolf out like over here? <laughs> over yeah, here? we're yeah, we're going over there before you wolf out. Oh, okay. Sure so do you want to be like over, like come all the way around, and you're yeah, like yeah, over we're here? we're like off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're I'm uh, so yeah, wolf form Dragon. Let's see how far. I think it's 120, so I have 120 foot. feet. Yeah. So I'm gonna you be, can be like over max, here in the woods. Max range is okay. my goal with a clear light. I'm casting Firebolt to hit. 21. Big streaking right. line of fire comes out of the dark woods. It's just kind of yeah. it's yeah. raining outside. Like <laughs> yeah. So the fire explodes into the side of this uh, wagon. It lights a flame because you know wagons are very flammable. Uh, these guards turn around and are like, "What's going on?" Then you hear the howl. Uh, roll me some intimidation on your howl for me. Okay. Nice. That's intimidating. Is I'll uh, get out. That is pretty. That's pretty intimidating. Let's do that one. Uh, intimidation. Yeah. Oh, so I got a, uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so these are looking fiery, right? Yes. They're over here. The the captain goes fiend in the woods and uh, runs off this way, and the golem is gonna is gonna follow. All right, the captain rolled an inside check on everything that's going on, and he rolled terribly, and, and he says, <laughs> to me! And so uh, the only person that stays around, or, or probably like a couple, as all of these people start running towards the woods here. Just those two stayed? Yeah, just those two. Nice. 
All right, and they're booking it towards the woods. So uh, there is now around. <laughs> you better not get caught. <laughs> ten, <laughs> people, <laughs> ten people in the <laughs> iron <laughs> golem. Uh, I'm running as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scooby Dooing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> at, this, at this point, this is not part of the plan, so these dudes are going to start making their oh, way down. As soon as the fireball yeah. hit, they would have come down. Yeah. But they would have met you guys. So, like, as soon as the fireball hit, you guys are moving. Right. To get the horses. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. y'all would have met as they came down and you guys came in. So yep. that's the plan. They're grabbing horses. Grab the horses, hook up the wagon. Let's go. We're not taking the wagon. Oh. So, yeah, that's just, true. The okay. wagon part would take way too the much wagon's time. Yes. To yeah, the we're just, we're, the plan is to get as many kids as we can on the horses and then. All right, A1, you have a friendly face. You go tell the kids. It's a bust out. It's okay. a rescue. So uh, we're going. So there's eight horses. And you could pretty much. Well, Win actually, Winston's gonna jump on one, and I'm sure the second would too. The second is gonna grab two kids, two horses, and kind of like lead them. Okay. Like they're not, they're not grabbing them yet, but they're like they're not jumping on, but she's leading them back, okay. and she's trying to get enough to where everybody could have a horse or kind of like, because there's seven of you over here, mm -hmm. there's six of you. If she grabs another one and somebody else grabs another one, then everybody could have a horse all right so that's the plan there i'm in the i'm sneaking up to the back here i'm like peeking my head over okay Is that kind of no. there you go. i'm peeking my head over and i'm saying kids let's go we're, we're gonna get you out of here we gotta get you to safety come on with me and i'm like pulling them out the back of the yeah helping them down like out of the, the back ground. of the bus and then so I get all seven of them out, mm -hmm. and we start moving around the tree, and we're just going up the we're just right. going up the road. Yeah, because we said, like we guys, said a mile down gone. the road, yeah, we're just going. Yeah. So I've got the kiddos, and we are busting it down the road as fast. I'm like corralling them as fast as we can. Someone roll a stealth check over here as you're collecting the the horses. You should have a really good one there, since you're a vampire. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know stealthy. if it works like that. Pretty stealthy. Oh, dude, it is actually plus seven. I was gonna say your cell should be twenty-one. Nice, right? All right, so well. Nope. All right, so they're already pretty much out of the clearing. So I, like, there's all this ruckus going on, and I'm sure that you're not yeah, stopping the howling. So like, they're they're all coming about after you. you yeah. they're, now they're in the woods. But they're on foot, and you're freaking four paws, but yeah. beating dirt, head now. <laughs> so you're able to get away. They're gonna double back to camp, but by the time they double back, you guys on your horses are out and wow. probably around us. Yeah, and we're out, out and we're like I am. We're beating dirt. So me and the kids are going as far as. And as fast as we can. So they'll catch us probably a half mile, quarter mile down. I'll say, okay. Garth and Hendrick sense? are both yeah. going to grab two as well. I'm going to try to mount the captain's horse, the pretty pure white one. Okay. And try to see if it likes me. All right. Roll for that. Dumb war horse. <laughs> I just want to see. I got seven. <laughs> all right. They're all very well trained. So, like, it doesn't, like, doesn't, doesn't bother. They don't really care who it is. That's sweet. Yeah. They're like, like super trained horses. All right. Hey, is there any way that I could get maybe one of them and rip them apart? Like if I stealthily attack him and rip his throat out before he even It's a slippery him? road, bro. No. Yeah. They're all together. You can do that, but then you would be in combat with all of them and they would take opportunity attacks on you. No. <laughs> and like half of them are ranged, yeah. bro. Yeah. Iron yeah. Golem is like, you take out one guy and there's uh, Iron Golem. Okay. Like, I'm just going to be in the woods, <laughs> like so a serial killer, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, the werewolf okay. is picking well, everyone to... out, like Bad Moon, yeah. or Silver Bullet. So are you guys just booking up? it as far away as you can on these horses before? So, because eventually, Drago will catch up with you. And Yeah, they, our plan can, was like, to rendezvous like a mile down the road that way. Yeah, and he can keep pace with you. Are you guys just going to keep going for a while to make sure that Once we rendezvous, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're right. going to take off. How long can the kids run? Yeah, well, they're on the horses. They're we're, on the horses, right? No, no, no. We're, no, because we only have that. seven or eight horses. 
one for each party member. They can but ride. You can put a kid on the back. Yeah. Put the kids oh, on the yeah. back, one yeah. with each. Yes. Yeah, I'll smart. The kids are huge. It's not yep. like they're going to fit. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then you just got to keep going until you, like, you're a ride through the night pretty much. We yeah, till we're two like, till we can't ride anymore. Yeah, okay. you can two kids on a horse with me. Just yeah, on right. Ride. Yeah. And right. you would have grown up, like, we all would have known how to ride yeah. in Rolling Hills. Okay. Let's, uh, see about 360 stuff. yards. I give myself like, a thumbs up uh, as a, as, an as like an indicator <laughs> of when we come back on from a break. Nice. All right, so <laughs> you guys are, you've, ro you've rode through the night pretty much, uh, and you're very far away. The kids are exhausted. They're like fall, like about to fall off the horses, all right? Uh, and this is where you've decided like, this is enough. We've, we've come far enough, uh, all right? And now you have the decision on how you're going to proceed with them. And for starters, Garth is just going to go, oh, I don't I don't know what happened, guys, but uh, <laughs> we, we were up on that mountain for that uh, that waterfall for a long time, and eventually we just came down because we, we didn't know what was going on. And uh, whatever happened, I guess it worked out. So good job. <laughs> it did work out. Probably the only way it could have, Garth. I wish I had a, had a beer. <laughs> it just looks at you like, where's hey, my beer? You can blame Henrik for that one, my dude. It wasn't my fault. Henrik just shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> Alright. And you got all these kids that are, like, sleep, or, like, pretty asleep at the moment, but uh, what are you guys, what are you going to decide to do with them? Because there's seven of them plus the baby. And you can also talk to them if you want to about anything. But they're uh, passed out at the moment, pretty tired. Are you still wolf? Uh, Drago just caught up with you guys, and he shows up in wolf form. <laughs> I, I kind of want to see your reaction, everyone. Okay, I'll Winston, let it. Winston's seen it before, so yeah. he's just packing his pipe. I'll let it ride. Right here. I'm, I'm feeding Gur. <laughs> yeah, it, I think that it, technically you get out of wolf form after an hour. Right. Yeah, that's true. But, but we're just good for the funniness of it. We'll just go with it. Really cool. Yeah. So <laughs> you come up to the the camp. Did you like tell anybody you're gonna do this beforehand? No. <laughs> Only my bros knew knew I was doing it. All right. So Zuri, like you come up like pretty nonchalant, non-threatening for a werewolf, right? Like you're just like chilling. Oh, well, are you two, <laughs> you're two feet in it, right? Just yeah. like walk up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Zuri like raises his hammer and he's like. What in the, in the, what? <laughs> and he's like about to bring Winston down chuckles. On his face. Yeah, Winston starts laughing. What? What's so funny? This thing is going to t attack us. <laughs> I said, yeah. If you if you want to attack him, you're gonna lose that hand. I promise you that. Just you see your friend. <laughs> this is my brother. And he like stares deep in your eyes and like gets really close and he's like trying to see you in there. <laughs> he's just like very at that moment. Out. Drago begins to turn back into a uh, human form because time's up. Mm. Winston gives another chuckle. So they kind of see like the transformation in front of their eyes, and then Drago kind of looks at him and goes, "Hey, that went really well. <laughs> 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 Better than expected." Yep. What? Your group is uh, full of surprises. But Magic is all but dead in this land, but you, you stink it's like it's all over you, all of you. <laughs> New generation. Speaking of magic, we got to decide what we're going to do with these kids. We have somewhere we have to be, like in six days. Well, we're at least one day so, closer, right? It's a week and a half, so you have about a, like a week and like a day left. Probably okay. is what you had before. The finish days. Yeah. Okay. A week. And how long of a ride is it to? It's a nice. week or, or around about to get there. Is there a? Um, so we only have a day to, like, spare. Is yeah. there a nearby village that we can kind of drop these kids off as we go? I think we need to talk to the kids. And that would take out. us more than a day out of our way, probably. You think so? Well, I mean, not. We haven't explored this part of the country, so we don't really know. We'll have to see on our ride. You know and who has explored this part of the country? Henrik and Garth. Yeah. Missouri. And they only agreed to come with us. For the children. 
then these are the childrens of Dag- the children of Dagger's Edge, so they should. Let's talk to them about what they want to do with the. Kids. Do we have the yeah. baby? Do we have the baby? Yeah. 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 And Drago goes over and takes the child. Okay. And uh, holds on to it. Okay, Jen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just Jen. Ah. <laughs> All right, uh, so what are you asking the group? Uh, what, what they want to do with the kids. Because they're the last, like, these are the last citizens of Dagger's Edge standing before us. This Presumably. Is, the, Jag, the Dagger's Edge was the closest uh, we knew of a safe haven in this. There's countless small villages but uh, nothing very safe uh, around they all get plagued by the terrors of the knights and the, the monsters they, they do not uh, they do not protect their city there do you uh, do you all know of any where safe for the kids and for us to go yes we do do we where's my mother at where's in it's like an island isn't it mm-hmm so it's a bunch of different giant turtles. Giant turtles, bridges yeah. Bridges that interconnect them. And they're somewhere in the outlets. And they roam around the desert. That's awesome. Well. You, you think is this is safe for us? And If you can find these people. I can get in contact with my mother with my walkie stone. Yeah. You'll have to try to figure it out, remember? Oh, yeah, 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 I don't know how to, but if we can get in contact with her. Do you want to try to figure it out? Yes. All right, roll an Arcana check. Okay, I was going to ask you if it was Arcana. Yep. That's a great plan. Drago is Kids in the background. Uh, he killed a deer on his way, and so he took the skin from the deer, and he's kind of making a, uh, a like a... Backpack for the baby. Nice. Winston's gonna w- whittle out the antlers into some little like dolls, like little minis for the kids. There you go. Yeah, that's what Winston's doing. Is they're sm- they're sitting there smoking their pipes as you're cleaning it. Yeah. As you're cleaning the the meat or yeah. whatever, he's whittling the antlers. All right. So you're not sure how long it takes for message to get to your intended. Makes a little Target. necklace for your kid. Uh, but you think necklace. you figured out how to send the message. Okay. A message. Okay. And it's a sending stone. Sending stone. It'd be hilarious. Yeah. The Anybody message I'll send is another. In the face. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't send this message in pleasantries. I send this in need. We have rescued children from Dagger's Edge. The city is burned, and we have no place for these children to go. Where are you? We're sending friends with the children. We hear the help me over one year now. Okay, so, so you know where she is. You know roundabouts where they are. They'll just have to go find, like, you're not going to be able to get, be given an exact coordinate. Kind of yeah, day. no, it'll be like, they're coming, look out, kind yeah. of. So, yeah, they're and, coming to you, look out for them. And then 30, remember you have, like, 30 words before it cuts off. Just yeah. so you know in the yeah, future. Yeah. But that, that was short. I was going to say, that was shorter than 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Short that was pretty much all it was going to be. Okay. So, they are coming to you, be on the lookout. Their names are Henrik Garth Zuri. With seven children. Okay. Six children, because the baby's staying on the No, there's seven plus the baby, the one that was dead in the, the wagon. Sorry. His word of eight, chairman. so there were nine total. Astrid, put him in the cat food, you moron. All right. Uh, okay. Is there anybody? So, like, yeah. if you guys are good with that, they're going to head out. They're going to take probably most of the horses with them, unless you want three for yourself. Oh, yeah, we want one each. Okay. I can ride with one of you guys. So there's three of them. Because well, we'll they can, horses, they can take the need, journey slower. Like, yeah. they don't need the speed. The second will be you know, with they'll us. Need, right? They'll use the horses more to carry their goods. And so there's four of and us. stuff, because they have a long journey ahead of them. There's four of us, and so, I ride with you, so we only need three horses. there's four horses. 
There, there's eight horses. So if you have four and they take four, yeah, that we, works. we, we, we only need all. three horses. Let's just take four. Wow, I can ride. You can have your you can have your own horse, kid. It'll be your own first horse. Okay, I'm down. Can and I need him? I don't see why not. And then, uh, so this brown one. All the kids are going <laughs> with them except them for the baby. Yeah, Drago yeah. looks at uh, them as they're taking the kids, and pretty sure Siri kind of comes up to him and says, "Can I take the little one or something?" And Drago goes, "Not, not this one. He comes with me." This big responsibility. Uh, you sure you are ready to be father? I wouldn't say so much father, but maybe you know, saw it on a TV show once, Mandalorian, kind of like Mando and Baby Yoda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe my uh, Toby Keith once said, talked about Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> this is <Canon>. awesome. <laughs> in a bard song. <laughs> in really in like a it. song of my part. <laughs> I really like this Toby Keith, and I hope to hear more of his ballads. Uh, I'll send you uh, uh, my playlist on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, apparently Zuri has also has a portal gun. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Zuri, for everything, and safe travels on your journey and I hope our path cross again yeah as well Gorse brother and he puts his hand on your shoulder and then that's uh, kind of cool like cause you're like a real dwarf yeah you know? and, and I haven't had that you know? yeah yeah do any of you want to talk to them before they leave or any of the kids before they leave just uh, I'm gonna talk safe to, travels on their way I'm gonna talk to Henry and tell them where they're headed and yeah. that my mother is going to be looking for them. Okay. I'll describe her. Yeah. Alright. And, and that's a wrap. So then, yeah, please tell my mom that we are okay. And... You want me, you want, uh, you want me to give her a kiss from you? <laughs> sure thing. Okay, we'll try that, you, see what happens. Okay. <laughs> I don't really know how that works out for you. Come back with a half goblin brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so they're gone then. If you guys got nothing else to say to them. Yeah. And you got your four horses there. Nice. Sweet. You're now the four horsemen. Four horsemen. All right. So this next part, uh, as we go through. There's going to be two things of important that, that really takes place during this week of travel. Uh, you will have like uh, different battles, we'll say, that are not highlighted. So like there are things that you with the second can easily handle. All right, so it's not like a week of just like peacefulness because that's not mm -hmm. how the countryside works. Okay, but you're heading south along the road that these people, like the Crimson Order, was taking back to the city anyways, because it was a very similar road down to where this Lich's Tower is going to be. Uh, so one night, while just sitting around the campfire, singing that campfire song, uh, the C-A-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-G song? <laughs> Bilbo, or nope, Winston is studying Bilbo's bag, that's what I meant to say, and on the inside, a uh, little flap of the bag, there's three words written on it. And it's the same word three times. It says, Zindros, Zindros, Zindros. And as Winston says it, a portal appears in front of you. It's a purple portal that is just totally right in front of you all. And that's where we'll end our session.